on to the main event. The State of the City Address by Mayor Stephen Cassidy. Mayor Cassidy, in his role as a member of the U.S. Conference of Mayors and as the Alameda County Conference of Mayors President, has been able to shine a national spotlight on San Leandro in the last few months. So Mayor, we're here tonight to hear your thoughts on our favorite city and our favorite subject, San Leandro today and San Leandro tomorrow. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, good evening. On behalf of the City Council and our entire organization, it's a pleasure to welcome you to this year's State of the City Address. In my 2011 State of the City Address, we focused on challenges and positioning San Leandro for recovery and prosperity. Last year's address was geared towards shaping San Leandro's economic future. Tonight, I'm pleased to talk about that future and the transformation that's occurring in San Leandro. Innovation is change that results in enhanced performance. With the help of many partners, we are transforming San Leandro into a center of innovation. We are a city that still has challenges, but we're also a city that is in the midst of major change. Change that bodes well for the future of our community. Change that will help our residents and businesses thrive and prosper in the years to come. Before I discuss these changes, challenges, and opportunities, I'd like to express my gratitude to my fellow council members. We work well together, jointly developing goals for our city, establishing policies, improving the budget. We represent San Leandro in county, regional, and national public agencies and organizations. I'm proud of the spirit of cooperation and unity of purpose among the council members. We're all focused on doing what's right for the people of San Leandro. I'd also like to express my gratitude to our partners in public service at the county, regional, state, and federal levels of government. In 2013, San Leandrans are extremely fortunate to be represented by one of the best group of elected officials we have ever had. They each possess strong leadership qualities and a commitment to the public good. Without excluding anyone, I wish to recognize several of them, starting with our county supervisor, Wilma Chan, and Carol Rogers, Dr. William West, and the other members of the Eden Township Healthcare District Board for their determination and unrelenting efforts to maintain emergency and acute care services at San Leandro Hospital. I thank our East Bay Municipal Utility Dis 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 District Director, Frank Mellon, for working with city staff and residents to ensure that the planned partial renovation of Chabot Dam is undertaken efficiently and with the least community impacts as possible. I thank Doug Simon and the other East Bay Park Directors for the funds under Measure WW, which we have used to restore and upgrade the parks and open space at the Marina Shoreline, and for the ongoing work to transform Oyster Point into San Leandro's newest park and open space. I thank our Park Directors, Rebecca Saltzman and Robert Rayburn, and former Park Director, Bob Franklin, for recognizing the maintenance and renovation of existing park stations, including San Leandro Bayfair stations, is just as important to BART riders as the expansion of the BART system into new communities. I also thank our BART directors for partnering with the city to improve the neighborhoods and community surrounding BART stations. I thank Alameda County Transit Directors Mark Williams and Elsa Ortiz for engaging and listening to the community in shaping the Bus Rapid Transit, or BRT, plan, which will increase the speed at which bus riders travel to and from downtown San Leandro and downtown Oakland, along East 14th in International Boulevards. I thank our former mayor and state Senate Majority Leader, Ellen Corbett, joined now by Senator Lonnie Hancock and Assemblymember Rob Otta for advancing the interests of San Leandro and Sacramento. I'm a member of the Mayors Against Illegal Guns, a coalition of mayors nationwide demanding stricter gun regulations. Senators Corbett and Hancock and Assemblymember Bonta are also focused on reducing gun violence in Alameda County and statewide. I thank them for their leadership on this issue. In 2013, due to redistricting, San Leandro became part of the 13th Congressional District represented by Barbara Lee. We are fortunate to now be represented by one of the most passionate, wise, and effective members of Congress. Even before becoming our representative, last summer, uh, Barbara Lee assisted us in our successful application for a $2.1 million grant from the Economic Development Agency, an agency within the U.S. Department of Commerce, to expand the San Leandro, our high-speed fiber optic network. 
Congresswoman Lee is also working to reduce gun violence in Alameda County, and we support her efforts. The City Council knows that our success depends upon the hard work and talent of the approximately 415 city employees working every day to make San Leandro a special place. From our police officers to our librarians, recreation and parks, and public school staff, our finance, community development, and human resource personnel work diligently behind the scenes so that services are delivered efficiently and seamlessly. Well, it's only been a little over a year since he moved to San Leandro, City Manager Chris Zapata has firmly taken charge of our organization, building an outstanding leadership team committed to offering superior service to the community. Much of the success for our city that I cite tonight in my speech can be attributed to his leadership and that of our Assistant City Manager, the Ann Marshall, and our Department Managers and Directors. Please join me in thanking all of our talented city employees and committed public servants. I'd like all city employees in the audience to rise and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> our Chamber of Commerce is a key partner in helping us grow local companies and promoting businesses and the community wellness. I thank the companies that partnered with the Chamber of Commerce tonight in co-sponsoring tonight's event, OSI Soft, Wells Fargo, and Kaiser. At this time, I'd like all of the members of our business community to stand and be recognized and receive a round of applause. Our schools have been making great improvements in their infrastructure and coming out of a five-year period of repeated cuts to their operating budgets due to the state budget crisis. San Leandrans know that when our schools succeed, our city succeeds. The city values its great partnership with both the San Leandro and San Lorenzo school districts. I wish to in particular acknowledge that Cindy Cathy, the superintendent of the San Leandro Unified School District, who is here tonight, has led the district for the past three and a half years and been an educator for 36 years. She has dedicated her adult life to the education and development of the children of San Leandro and will be retiring this summer. Will Superintendent Kathy and all school board members, teachers, administrators, and other folks that are part of the San Leandro educational community please rise and let's give them a round of applause. Nonprofits and faith-based organizations have been challenged with growing needs and shrinking resources. San Leandro's community kindness is truly being tested with many worthy causes. Please support and help me recognize the community contributions of our partners, such as Davis Street, Boys and Girls Club, and Building Futures. Will everyone associated with a nonprofit or a faith-based organization please stand and be recognized? Our city is fortunate to have true public servants on boards and commissions that give generously of their time and expertise on community issues. These issues are complex, ranging from land use decisions to personnel matters. Will all members of our boards and commissions please stand and be recognized? I'd like to thank the residents of San Leandro, residents that care about our history, Residents that care about our services. Residents that give up their time and effort to mentor our youth, coach sports teams, lead our boys and girls scouts. Residents that help make San Leandro safer through their participation in neighborhood watch groups. You are the reason government exists. You are active involved in schools, churches, nonprofits, and government, to name a few, are what makes San Leandro a special place to live, work, and play. On behalf of our organization, and the City Council, I want to thank you for your support. And finally, there's one special person I wish tonight, and that's the person that allows me to do so much. Together, we're raising two beautiful children, and she is the love of my life and my soulmate, and that is Amy Cassidy. What are the positive changes that are occurring in our community? Let me speak of this in the context of the city, city Council's six goals. 
Our first goal is to place the city on a firm foundation for long-term fiscal sustainability. For the past two years, we have adopted balanced budgets in a time of unprecedented challenges for cities due to the state's elimination of redevelopment agencies. Last year, taking advantage of historically low interest rates, we refinanced a debt owed to CalPERS for the pensions of our public safety officers. The refinancing was a straight reduction in the interest rate due on the debt. We did not extend the term of the debt, nor take on any new debt. The refinancing generated approximately $300,000 in savings in the first year, and approximately $147,000 to our general fund over the next 12 years. Earlier this year, we did the same with other city debt. Uh, we reduced the city's interest payments by $1.8 million over the next 15 years. We also worked diligently over the past year to bring to an end, through reasonable settlements, two long-standing major controversies that had the potential for exposing the city to damages claims in excess of $20 million. For the first time in city's history, we will be adopting a two-year budget this June for fiscal years 2013 and 14. Moving to a biannual budget is an important step in achieving long-term fiscal stability. It's a procedural mechanism that can have significant and positive impact in ensuring we operate in a fiscally prudent manner. In last year's State of City Address, I noted that while the local economy was improving and city revenues were increasing, even under the most optimistic projections, the rate at which our revenues were increasing was less than the rate at which the retirement costs for city employees was increasing. To restore a city to long-term fiscal stability, as well as to provide retirement security for all city employees, I stated that we needed to make our pension system <coughs> sustainable. We have made substantial progress in this area. Our new three-year contract with the San Leandro Police Officers Association provides budget savings to the city in the first two years, with a slight cost increase by the end of the third year. Importantly, police officers will start paying the employee's share of the city's annual obligations to CalPERS at 3% of their salary from 2013, increasing by 3% each year, each year thereafter until reaching 9% in 2015. The contract also calls for police officers, officers to share 50-50 with the city for expected increases in health care costs. I commend the San Leandro Police Officers Association for working diligently with the city to produce a new agreement that recognizes our shared goals of public safety and fiscal responsibility. San Leandrans are rightly proud of having one of the finest police departments in California. We deeply appreciate the service and dedication of our police officers to the safety of our city. Our second goal is sustainable economic development with a focus on San Leandro becoming a leader in the Bay Area innovation economy. Let me show you a video staff produced that highlights our major economic initiative over the past two years, Mid San Leandro, which is a partnership between the city and Dr. Patrick Kennedy of OSI Soft to bring the highest speed broadband to San Leandro businesses. In today's innovation economy, success is measured by the speed in which ideas and information can be transferred across the country and around the world. The San Francisco Bay Area is renowned as a high-tech hub. Now the city of San Leandro is introducing a game changer for the entire region. Lit San Leandro, a state-of-the-art fiber optic loop that offers broadband users a high-performing, flexible, secure network with the capacity to carry up to 10 gigabits per second. This isn't a plan, it's a fact, thanks to the vision of Dr. Patrick Kennedy, founder of OSI Soft. San Leandro is now uniquely positioned to serve businesses with enormous capacity and unparalleled speed. The future is now for medical research, graphics and digital studios, 3D printing, advanced manufacturing and software development. Traditional businesses benefit from this speed as well, with service that is 2,000 times faster than the average internet connection. New arrivals will find a city that is business ready. San Leandro has long been home to such national food makers as Kraft, Ghirardelli, Sogs, and Otis Spunkmeyer, Mi Rancho Tortillas, manufacturers as traditional as Olson Steel and as innovative as Energy Recovery Incorporated, corporate headquarters like Trinet and ACO Engineered Systems. Kaiser has also chosen to make a billion dollar investment in San Leandro with a world-class medical center. 
advanced manufacturing and transportation oriented businesses have been thriving in San Leandro for decades. Why do they stay? Because San Leandro is one of the Bay Area's best homes for business. We have an educated, diverse workforce, varied and affordable housing, robust public transportation, and a vibrant, walkable downtown. San Leandro's central location gives it easy access to two international airports and a major seaport. We're 20 minutes from San Francisco by BART and less than a 30-mile drive to the Silicon Valley. The infrastructure for business is already here. Almost one quarter of San Leandro has been retained solely for industrial and commercial purposes. Attractively priced buildings are move-in ready or suitable for adaptive reuse. We are approving plans for two Class A office campuses totaling more than a half million square feet, one at the shoreline and one at the transit-oriented hub around the downtown BART station. The San Leandro lifestyle includes neighborhood parks, miles of shoreline, lakeside trails, and a golf course. San Leandro High School boasts a new multimedia lab and a performing arts center. $50 million in sports facility upgrades are underway. We're proud of our public library, farmers markets, and restaurants. People come from all over the Bay Area to enjoy our regional shopping centers. With our prime location, business-ready city government, an educated workforce, and the fastest broadband of any Bay Area city, San Leandro is wired to become the place for 21st century business. Get connected. As I noted last summer, after months of hard work by city staff, support from Representative Lee, and lobbying efforts by myself and the city council, we succeeded in obtaining a $2.1 million grant from the Economic Development Agency for the expansion of the San Leandro. The grant will facilitate the construction of 7.5 miles of new conduit, bringing the Lit San Leandro network to a total of over 18 miles. Further validation of the importance of Lit San Leandro to the city's economic future was provided by Federal Communications Chairman <coughs> Julius Janikowski, who visited San Leandro in February. At the U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting in Washington, D.C. in January, I invited the chairman to visit San Leandro and see firsthand Lit San Leandro in operation. During his visit to San Leandro, Chairman Janikowski praised our city for becoming a gigabit city saying that we join a small but important number of communities that understand the critical importance of high-speed broadband to our economy, and that the public-private partnership of Lit San Leandro can be a model for the country. One of the sites we intend on connecting to Lit San Leandro is the San Leandro Net Energy, Net, I'm sorry, Zero Net Energy Training Center, which as you heard will be opening or having its dedication on May 30th of this year. The Zero Net Energy Training Center is another example of how the future is being created today in San Leandro. The 46,000 square foot building will consume only as much energy as it creates over a 12 month period, achieving 17 years before California's requirement that by 2030, all new commercial buildings in the state will be zero net energy efficient. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 595, and the Northern California chapter of the National Electrical Contractors Association commissioned the first of its kind facility in the world to train the next generation of electricians for a career in clean energy. Our planning department worked closely with the architects and the contractors during the construction. I'm proud to report that Brian Benton, the executive director of the center, expressed to me his deep appreciation to the city and to our building staff for, quote, jumping through the hoops, unquote, to assist in moving the project to completion. Sustainable economic development also includes a commitment to energy conservation, use of recycled materials, and reducing greenhouse emissions and pollutions. The city's recent ban on polystyrene foam containers by restaurants and our participation in the countywide ban on plastic bags at supermarkets and grocery stores are important steps in safeguarding our environment. Our third goal is providing quality public safety services and working with the community in keeping San Leandro safe. 
Our police department in the past year has implemented several new programs aimed at improving efficiency. Um, we recognize that keeping San Leandro safe requires a sustained commitment to community outreach through efforts like Coffee with the Cops, the annual open house, National Night Out, and teen and adult academies, our police are regularly interacting with the community. In doing so, the department is helping educate San Leandrans on crime prevention and public safety while reinforcing the trust that exists between our police and community. This trust is vital as keeping San Leandro safe is everyone's responsibility. We all need to be the eyes and ears of our police. By reporting suspicious activity as it occurs, we enable our police to catch criminals and create the reputation among the criminal element in the Bay Area that San Leandro is a city to avoid. Our fourth goal is maintaining and enhancing the city's infrastructure. We were pleased to open our new downtown parking garage last November, located on SEO Avenue, close to East 14th Street. The garage contains 384 parking spaces, a capacity increase of about 50% over the facility it replaced. The garage will play a critical role in enhancing our downtown by offering convenient parking for employees and customers of our downtown businesses. A centralized parking facility also facilitates higher density development in the downtown, consistent with the city's transit-oriented development strategy. Adding to the physical improvement of downtown San Leandro, and after outreach by myself and former council member Joyce DeRosiak with the Bay Area Regional Director of Caltrans, the agency spent $1 million repaving the downtown area of East 14th Street, which is under the jurisdiction of Caltrans. We continue to work on the largest infrastructure project in the city's history, the $50 million wastewater treatment plant expansion. This investment allows San Leandro to meet essential needs and ever-increasing regulations as part of our role in safeguarding the quality of the water of the San Francisco Bay. We linked Lit San Leandro to our main and manor branch libraries. Overnight, that resulted in San Leandro's enjoying public libraries with the fastest wireless internet connections in California. Finally, we are reconstructing the group picnic areas and replacing the irrigation system within Marina Park. This is part of a $2.5 million modernization of the park and the adjacent park course and exercise area, which was completed in 2011. Our fifth goal is supporting programs and activities that enhance the quality of life in San Leandro and promote civic pride. Last year, we created a family swim pass for our pools. The pass was designed to encourage greater use of the pools by establishing a set fee for a family to swim for the summer. Parents could achieve significant savings compared to paying for each visit for each adult and child. Over 50 families purchased the pass last year, and we hope to triple this number for this summer. I'm pleased to announce that due to a, the generous donation of an anonymous donor, Farley Pool will be open on the weekends this summer for recreational swimming. Our Recreation and Parks Department does a tremendous job in providing a wide range of services to the community. In 2012, tens of thousands of seniors attended our classes, events, and social activities. Our senior paratransit provided nearly 17,000 rides for seniors. The department's programs, classes, and events for youth have over 40,000 participants each year. We were pleased to restore the funding for the Martin Luther King Day celebration. I thank Council Member Ursula Reed for helping organize a speech contest for our youth as part of the MLK celebration. Our main library is one of the jewels of San Leandro. It received nearly 700,000 visits in 2012. Our manor branch had another 135,000 visits last year. For the third consecutive year, our library received a big read grant from the National Endowment of the Arts and the Arts Midwest. The funds are used to promote literacy and underwrite an amazing series of performances and lectures. The books selected by library staff as part of the Big Read program have helped our community learn more about the history and culture of our diverse population. Only 75 libraries nationwide receive a grant each year. Obtaining this grant for unprecedented three consecutive years is a testament to the outstanding creativity and intelligence of our library staff. In 2012, the library established an electronic and downloadable book collection. Finally, the library plays an essential role throughout the year in enhancing the quality of life in San Leandro and celebrating our diversity. 
The library hosted 329 cultural and educational programs for the community, which had a combined attendance of over 27,000 adults and children. Our sixth goal is maintaining and building upon strong relationship with our schools. We accomplished much over the past year. In a win-win for the students in the city, we are loaning the San Leandro School District $1.2 million to purchase the Girls Inc. building on East 14th Street near San Leandro High School for use as a wellness and counseling center to address the physical and mental health needs of students. The school district, with the support and assistance of Supervisor Chan, applied for and received a substantial federal grant to create a health clinic. Under the agreement, the city will receive interest payments from the school district at a rate greater than what the city is earning on our reserve funds, but the rate is still very favorable to the school district. In addition, the city has also provided support this year for a guiding prevention counselor, as well as maintaining our ongoing commitment to provide police officers, referred to as school resource officers, to our schools. We are also delighted to have installed at the beginning of the school year a new traffic signal next to the Fred Korematsu ninth grade campus for the safety of students crossing the street. Now, what are our main challenges? The first challenge is public safety. Since January, we have experienced a sharp increase in burglaries, which has residents and patrol officers on high alert. I've spoken to mayors in other cities in the county, and they've experienced the same issue. After reaching record lows, crime has increased in California over the past two years. San Jose Mayor Chuck Reed recently stated, residential burglaries and property crimes have been on the rise in San Jose and around the state. He added, these increases may be tied to the state's prison realignment plans, which allow qualified inmates to be released early. In response to the burglaries, our police have ramped up their efforts in community outreach and proactive enforcement. Police have been walking neighborhoods and setting up information booths at shopping centers to educate the community on safety and crime prevention. Over the past several months, the police department has received an increase in calls from the community reporting suspicious behavior, many of which have resulted in arrests for crimes that occurred in San Leandro neighborhoods. Chief Spagnoli has shifted staffing to have a single point of contact for community outreach and community relations, and expanded the department's social media presence on Facebook, Twitter, and via text messaging. In the next few months, Chief Spagnoli will roll out a new initiative designed to engage and educate the community on safety and crime prevention at an even greater level. The police department is also in the process of transitioning from the traditional model of policing based upon dividing the city into established beats or broad districts to, for patrol to a more fluid approach. Under the new approach, specific areas of San Leandro receive greater police resources based upon statistical models that analyze and predict likely criminal activity down to the day of the week, time of day, and location based upon past crimes. All these efforts are intended to create a safer city. We are committed to providing exceptional public safety services. Our police are truly committed to enhancing and creating new community partnerships. They recognize the critical importance of staying connected to the community, which enables all of us to live and work in a safe city. Our second challenge is the condition of our roads. Each year, the city spends approximately $2 million on street sealing and road rehabilitation. The map of the slide shows the work that will occur this year in San Diego. Unfortunately, allocating about $2 million a year for our roads is only about a third of the amount needed just to maintain our roads in their present condition. The condition of the roads is measured in the Bay Area by an index called the Pavement Condition Index, or PCI. San Leandro's PCI is 54, down from a high of 64 in 2004. At a PCI of 54, our streets are at risk of accelerated deterioration if action is not undertaken. We've been on a downward trajectory over the past decade as the city cut funding for road repair due to repeated budget shortfalls. And just as prevention is less expensive than surgery, steady maintenance is cheaper than complete road reconstruction. There was a solution, it was called Measure B1, which would have increased the sales tax in Alameda County and provided tens of millions of dollars to San Leandro for road maintenance and repair. The measure needed two-thirds support to pass and lost by one-tenth of a percent last November. So what do we do now? 
The solution I see is placing a local revenue measure on the ballot next year. Over the course of this year and next, the council will engage the community in a conversation as to whether we wish to raise the local sales tax or pass the bond measure to address the condition of our roads. In the meantime, we are undertaking a significant roads project that I'd like to highlight. City staff over the past few years through their ingenuity cobbled together funds from various grants and county resources to undertake a $6.6 million redesign of San Leandro Boulevard near the BART station and rehabilitation of the roadway. The redesign will beautify the boulevard, make it more pedestrian friendly, and better connect the BART station to downtown San Leandro. Our third significant challenge is our budget, and specifically the city's structural deficit. For the past two years, we've had a balanced budget. We had a surplus in 2011, and in 2012, our revenues matched our expenses. We would have had a surplus this fiscal year, except for our transfer of $600,000 in one-time only revenue to our reserves fund. This was the first increase in our reserves since prior to the Great Recession. As I noted earlier, we were also proactive and generate ongoing savings by refinancing city debt. However, the city has a structural deficit. Even though our workforce remains at about 450 employees, and employees have not received a salary increase for several years, the total compensation our employees receive and the cost of the general fund continues to rise due to increasing benefit costs, namely rising health care expenses and greater contributions owed to CalPERS for employee pensions. We are looking at a deficit of about $2 million for fiscal year 12-13 and a $4 million deficit for 2014-2015. This is a prime example of the benefit of a biannual budget. It prevents us from wearing rose-colored glasses and failing to address revenue shortfalls beyond the next 12 months. We are committed to adopting a balanced budget for the next two, two fiscal years. To do so will require continued sacrifices by our employee groups. Again, I thank our police officers for stepping forward and working with us to craft a contract that produces savings in the next two years. Rising employee benefit costs are not the only reason for the projected deficit. Our expenditures are also rising due to the ending of a grant from the federal government for the funding of five police officer positions. We will continue to keep these police officers. The expense, though, must now be shouldered by our general fund costing us $450,000 next fiscal year and $900,000 in the following fiscal year. Another cost that's new to our budget is recognition of the unfunded liability for the health care of firefighters when they retire. The city contracts with the Alameda County Fire Department for fire emergencies and medical services. We have done so since the mid-1990s. Joining the County Fire Department was a way to achieve budget savings without a drop-off in service. Each year, the County Fire Department provides us a contract for assigning 63 firefighters plus administrative support and other services. Until this year, however, the County Fire Department did not account for the full cost of providing lifetime health care to firefighters as part of the contract with the city. The unfunded liability owed by San Leandro for firefighter retiree health care today stands at $18.5 million. We must now account for this cost in our budget and start making payments to reduce the liability or will grow rapidly. We are looking at spending a million dollars annually to address this liability. Remember, the firefighters are not city employees. The city also has an unfunded liability for retiree health care of city employees. However, this amount has been accounted for in our budget. Moreover, new city employees do not have, and have not for years, been entitled to full lifetime medical care. We cap the payments for retiree medical care for city employees. The contract with the County of Fire Department constitutes 25% of our general fund and is expanding. We cannot staff our police department at current levels and continue to fund our library and recreation departments at current levels if a significant component of the city's general fund expands at a rate greater than our revenues are expanding. We value the work of the county firefighters and greatly respect their professionalism and dedication to the safety and welfare of San Leandro. But the fiscal reality is we must all do more with less. Just as our police officers address their pension costs, I ask the county firefighters to work with the county and city in addressing the full costs of the health care benefits they receive. Now, let's shift to the opportunities for San Leandro. 
Before I speak of the excitement that is literally building in San Leandro, I would like to thank again the businesses that are already here. They are the foundation for the future and we share a desire to retain and grow our local businesses. New developments are transforming San Leandro into a community that has world-class health care and along the way revival of our shoreline on beautiful San Francisco Bay. In addition, our bar stations provide a competitive edge to our partners at the Bay Fair Mall as they make and remake and renovate this key property. The Kaiser Hospital Project represents the next generation of health care for the region. These services are essential to meet the health and welfare needs of thousands of families of, of San Leandro's. The Kaiser Hospital also increases the number of employees in our city by 2,400 positions. These jobs represent not just a number, but people who will spend time, money, and add their individual talents to our community. In the next two weeks, after many years of planning and community engagement, the City Council will kick off the environmental review process for the shoreline development. This long-awaited step sets the stage for a long-awaited dream of further activating the marine area. I thank Ed Miller of Calcoast, the developer for the project, for his persistence and work to create new restaurants, a hotel, and conference center that San Leandro's visitors will patronize and enjoy. We are excited about the commitment of Macy's to Bayfair Mall. Anchor tenants are increasingly important to regional malls, and Madison Marquette's effort to secure a national brand like Macy's and to renew this contract is appreciated. Our hope is that the work to renovate the Macy's store will be done in time for the holiday season next year. Property values in San Leandro are rising. In 2013, 2012-13, San Leandro had the third highest rate of growth in assessed value in Alameda County. San Leandro has innovation in its DNA. Soon after our city was founded, a family-owned business on Davis Street helped revolutionize agriculture and earth moving in America. Daniel Best created steam, diesel, and gas-powered tractors that replaced horsepower, and transformed many industries. Today, Dr. Patrick Kennedy, whose company, OSI Soft, is located on Davis Street, and in fact, on the very same property that the Best Factory was located, is a pioneer of the digital age. He's helping us transform San Leandro. Fiber optic networks are essential infrastructure of the 21st century, and we are providing San Leandro business a significant competitive advantage to grow and become industry leaders. For example, one business in San Leandro that regularly must download huge amounts of data as part of its operations recently connected to the San Leandro. What took 30 minutes to download now takes less than 15 seconds. Investment and development follow infrastructure. In the 18th century, it was seaports. In the 19th century, it was railroads. In the 20th century, it was highways and airports. Today, it is ultra-high-speed broadband connectivity. If you build it, they will come, and San Leandro has it all. Highways, nearby seaports and airports, rail and public transportation, and now the fastest broadband in the United States. The possibilities for San Leandro are limited and of world class. World class because of our location, transportation infrastructure, beautiful natural setting, and weather. World class because of our educated workforce, dynamic projects, a global corporate presence, and shared vision among our political, business, and civic leaders in the importance of innovation. The future is being created today in San Leandro. We are in the beginning stages of transforming our city into a center of innovation. Thank you for coming tonight, and thank you for helping make San Leandro such a special and unique place to live, work, and play.